Recent months, there has been a push to legalize hemp farming in America. Some say it's clean and a sustainable crop that's easy to grow and will help the ailing economy. Others say legalizing it will only complicate the country's current war on drugs. KUSI's Bridget Naso has more on the controversial crop in a two-part special report, Hemp in America. A one-man protest caught the nation's attention this spring. A local businessman and activist, David Bronner, locked himself in a steel cage with hemp plants from Canada in front of the White House. His mission? To legalize industrial hemp. I'm here putting my, my liberty in, in, at risk. To, all I'm asking is, I want to send $100,000 to American farmers. You know, we want to send our money to American farmers. But why would the president of a soap company in Escondido be at the forefront of this issue? because he's the president of Dr. Bronner's Soap Company, founded by Bronner's grandfather in Germany in the 1800s. He brought the company to Southern California in the late 1940s. The soap has changed very little since it was first created. It's all natural with no preservatives. And the key ingredient is hemp seed oil. It's really high in the omega-3 essential fatty acid. This is a triple unsaturated fatty acid. It's very smooth and emollient on the skin. It makes our lather much less drying and went smoother and has uh, you know, been a key part of the success of the, of the soaps. Bronner says in the past 10 years, business has grown from $5 million to $50 million a year. He says Americans want to buy natural and sustainable products, but Bronner can't buy his staple ingredient, hemp oil, from growers in the U.S. Every year we import 20 tons of hemp seed oil from Canada and send well over $100,000 to Canadian farmers. And, you know, the collectively, the, the American industry is sending, you know, tens of millions of dollars to Canada, China, Europe, you know, who, whose farmers are allowed to cultivate and process industrial hemp. Sure, a change of policy would benefit him financially, but this, he says, is about ending the war on what he calls a harmless crop. Obama came in, cha you know, promising that his policy was going to be science and reason-based, rational. I mean, what could be more, you know, rational than, you know, Recommercializing industrial hemp in a, in a recession. Hemp farming is not new to American farmers. It had been legal for years, even farmed by our first president. George Washington was a hemp farmer. Thomas Jefferson was a hemp farmer. Um, you know, the first law of Jamestown was it was illegal not to grow hemp on your farm. You know, it was that important of a, of a crop. Used to make clothing, paper products, and even covered wagons. Bronner says hemp is still used today by manufacturers of German cars. So what happened to hemp in America? The stigma began in the 1930s at the end of Prohibition. The government and the media, says Bronner, campaigned to scare the public, and competitive industries fed the fuel to get rid of hemp. You had these drug warriors, uh, you know, out of work, looking for a job. Um, you know, industries like timber and cotton, uh, you know, threatened by, by, by hemp as a competitor. Competitive crop. And as a result, except for a short time during World War II to help with the war effort, hemp was banned. But Bronner says the hysteria over hemp has been overblown. You can't get high on hemp. For millennia, they've been bred separately and optimized for different things. Industrial hemp is op optimized for seed and fiber, whereas you know marijuana varieties are optimized for THC in the flower. Industrial hemp cannot get you high. And with the current economy, Bronner and even some lawmakers say. It's time to allow hemp farming in America again. Bridget Naso, KUSI News. And coming up in part two of our series tomorrow, Hemp in America, KUSI's Bridget Naso has more on the effort to make hemp legal in the U.S. and why politicians and law enforcement want little to do with the controversial topic. In part one of our special report, Hemp in America, we examine the history of hemp farming and the effort by one local businessman to legalize it. Well, tonight we have more on why some lawmakers support the idea as one of the solutions to our ailing economy. But as KUSI's Bridget Naso tells us, there are still a lot of people who want to keep this crop from growing on U.S. soil. A local businessman and advocate for legalizing hemp farming locked himself in a steel cage this spring outside of the White House to call attention to the issue. David Bronner's company, Dr. Bronner Natural Soaps, uses hemp oil. But hemp is illegal to grow in the U.S because it's classified as a controlled substance, and Bronner has to import it from Canada. Now he says it's time for the government to change its policy and recognize that hemp and marijuana are very different plants. It's just ridiculous that we're, that this, this industry, which is growing every year, is doubling. We just continue to give to the Canadians and the Chinese and the Europeans, you know, are just laughing at us. 
Legal expert Dan Gillian says Bronner is technically correct. Hemp is a plant. It's closely aligned and similar to marijuana, but it's a totally separate plant. And Gillian says people don't get high on hemp. Marijuana would have somewhere between 5 and 20 percent THC in it, whereas hemp only has 1 percent. So it really, I mean, if you smoke this, you get a headache, you wouldn't get high. For centuries, the two plants have been grown for distinctly different purposes. Hemp is industrial, says Bronner, used for fabric like cotton, only it's cleaner to grow, and also for paper, which saves trees. Industrial hemp is op optimized for seed and fiber, whereas you know marijuana varieties are optimized for THC in the flower. And Bronner says this kind of farming is much different than growing marijuana for medicinal or recreational purposes. To grow industrial hemp, you need a lot of land in order to make it worthwhile for the farmer. Typically, marijuana is grown in smaller areas and far apart to help the flower grow. If it's grown in larger areas illegally, it's typically more easy to find by law enforcement, like this bust. Last week on 40 acres of private property near Warner Springs, it netted $40 million worth of the drug. And growing the plants together, says Bronner, would ruin the hemp and the marijuana because of cross-pollination. The leaders of several states, including North Dakota, know the difference, says Bronner, and want to make it legal to farm. However, recently Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon added an amendment to the recent farm bill that would make hemp farming legal. Not one U.S. senator signed it. Legal expert Dan Gillian says that's no surprise. The politicians, they're more, I think they're just scared, really, to do anything. They don't want to be the guy that, made, that uh, legalized hemp because the perception by the public is hemp is the same as marijuana. And given the dangers surrounding drug trafficking, law enforcement wants nothing to do with legalizing this plant, given its close association with marijuana. And the local DEA office did not want to comment on our story. Some people would say this is not a good idea given the current drug crisis in America. What would you say to those people? In China, where they'll shoot you if, if you have marijuana, they grow you know tens of thousands of acres of industrial hemp. Bronner's hope is that now that the state of California has legalized medicinal marijuana, it will only be a matter of time before hemp farming becomes legal, possibly through a standalone bill in Congress or state by state. Thirteen states want to grow. They have laws on the books ready to go. We just need the federal government to get out of the way. But until that day, Bronner and other companies like his will have to import hemp products and continue to send their dollars overseas. Bridget Naso, KUSI News.